Good morning, everybody. Agunar Shabbos, and we are going to explain a beautiful idea on the parsha through the eyes of Bitochen Be'ez Hashem. This week is Shabbos Hagodol. Shabbos Hagodol commemorates for us the great Shabbos that existed before the Jewish people left Mitzrayim, when they were finally going to have the Geula, the redemption. And we know that one of the mitzvahs that HaKadosh Baruch commanded us in was the Korban Pesach, bringing the sacrifice, the, the Passover sacrifice. And what had to be done was they needed to bring this animal four days before the Shechita, before the ritual slaughtering, in order to make sure that there was no blemish on it at all. Now where would they get sheep in order to be able to do this Korban, this sacrifice? So, Baruch Hashem, they, lived, they were living in Mitzrayim at the time, and the Mitzrayim themselves, the Egyptians, one of their gods was the lamb, was the sheep. So they were all over the place. Their gods were walking around everywhere. So the Yidin, the Jews, they went out and they got these lambs. And they put a little leash around their neck, and they began walking them through the streets to bring them back to their home. And the Egyptians said to them, Where are you going? What are you doing with our gods? And they said, this is your God? Well, our God, the Rebbeinu Sha'ilam, the master of the universe, heavens and the earth, he commanded us that we need to take it and we need to bring it to our homes and we need to make sure and guard it for the next four days that there's not a blemish there. And then we're going to shecht it, we're going to slaughter it, we're going to put the blood on the doorpost of our homes and then we're going to sit and roast it. You'll smell the roasting of that meat all throughout Mitzrayim, and then we're going to sit down with our families for a delicious, tasty meal right before we leave Mitzrayim and head off into the wilderness. Now, of course, you can understand that the Mitzrayim were exceedingly angry at this moment, and they were really stupefied. How could the Jews do such a thing? And yet we see that not a single Mitzrayim, not a single Egyptian was able to touch the Jewish people and stop them and prevent them from doing what they were doing. Since that Klal Yusa went with the Muna Shalema and an ultimate Bitachin and Hashem, HaKadosh Baruch Hu made like a force field for them that no one was able to bother them as they were embarking upon this life of mitzvahs to do for the Rebbein HaShayim. We see an amazing, amazing thing over here. We've spoken about this distinction quite often over the several months that we've been learning Bitachin. There's two, two parts of our belief system in Hashem. Number one is Amuna, and the second one is Bitochen. Amuna is, like the Rambam writes, Ladas es Hashem, to get to know the Rebbein Yisraelim, to learn about HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to see how He runs the world, to understand to the best of our abilities, actions, and to put our Amuna, to put our faith in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that a cold the Yavid Rachman of the Tavavi, that everything Hashem does for the good, Hashem is running the world, He doesn't make any mistakes, it's all under His omniscient hand and His power. That's Amuna. Amuna is where a Yid, a Jew, walks around with a belief that there is a master of the universe who's watching over me and cares about me and has been doing this for thousands of years already with all of my previous generations. That's Amuna. Bitachin, which we have been spending the focus of these shirim on, Bitachin, which means to rely and trust in Hashem, Bitachin is what we would call in the world of Ashkafa, it is called living Amuna. It is called practicing Amuna. It is called allowing our Amuna to guide and to motivate our actions where we are willing to take that step and show HaKadosh Baruch that all of the wellsprings of Amun that we have inside of ourselves, we're now beteach da Hashem, we trust in HaKadosh Baruch and we're, we're willing to act upon the Amuna that we have. Klal Yisrael was being built up for about 10 months in Egypt with all of the makais, all the plagues, each and every one was instilling more and more and more Amun into Klal Yisrael. It was opening their eyes to the fact that there's a creator of this world who is in control of everything. And he's the mashkiach, he's watching over it all. He does hashkach, pratis, there's divine intervention. And there's providence that only HaKadosh Baruch could do. And that was a build-up. And then HaKadosh Baruch says, I want you to do something. I want to see just how much you actually believe in me. I want to see where is your bitachin, where are you holding in the world of bitachin. So you go 
into the midst of the Egyptians and you take their God and you walk through the streets and when they're going to ask you what you're doing, you don't be bashful. You tell them, we're taking the sheep and we're going to shecht it and we're going to sprinkle the blood and we're going to roast it and we're going to eat it and we're going to enjoy it. And you show that the amuna that you developed over the last 10 months or so in Mitzrayim is so real that you're willing to act upon that amuna with the advent and um, rising yourself up to the level of bitachin, of trusting and relying in Hashem. And that's in fact what Klal Yisrael did. Klal Yisrael brought themselves to a new madrega, to a new level which they had not yet exhibited in Mitzrayim. And that is, not only are we becoming a nation of ma'aminim, of those who believe in Hashem, the belief is so strong that we are willing and ready and able to act upon it with confidence and diligence and dedication. And therefore they did what they did with the gods of Mitzrayim, and they had no fear, and they were not concerned or worried at all, Rather, they brought it right into their homes. They tied it right to the bed and they let the sheep there and he's buying the whole time that the Egyptians hear what's going on. And they couldn't stop them. Why? Because Klal Yisrael, who are ma'aminim b'nei ma'aminim, we are the children of believers. That amuna which we gained in Mitzrayim, brought us to a new madrega. And that is the level of bitachin. And when a person has bitachin, they are literally willing to do anything that is necessary to show their allegiance and their dedication and their amuna in the Rebbeinah Shailam. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful Shabbos.